So this is the case study to introduce macros and macro buttons. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a macro to clean up the data in these four worksheets, which are these four down here. And we're going to freeze top row, sort by sales order, delete current standard cost, delete current, uh, invoice sales column, create formulas for gross profit and gross profit percentage columns, and create subtotals at the top of the data. Okay, so let me go to 2016. And the first, so I'm going to go to 2016. I'm going to put my cell in A1 to start with, and I'm going to click on record macro. And just put some data, description, and then say OK. So the first thing I'm going to do is delete my columns. I'm going to freeze my top row. I'm going to sort by sales order. Okay, I'm going to create my formulas. Sales minus cost. Profits divided by sales. And then I'm going to copy, copy this lower. formulas in all the columns. Okay, now I'm going to create my subtotals, starting at quantity. over. Here's a formula, so I'm going to, this is going to be not a total, but this should be a formula. And let's make this a percent. And then let me format with subtotal. Okay, so now that I did all that basic work there, I'm going to go ahead and back to the view and tell the recorder to stop recording. So now my, my macro has been set up. And did I forget anything? Nope, I got everything in that macro. So now when I go to 2017, I can, I can uh, first, let me save the file. Now here it says, click to continue saving as a macro free. Click yes, I don't want to be macro free, so I'm gonna hit no, because I want to save the macro. When you save to a macro, you want to uh, save the special workbook, which is XLSM. So now I have it saved as an XLSM file to be able to incorporate the macro. So now when I go to 2017, I can go to View Macros, and I could click this, and I can run the macro. And you see here that it ran it. I am getting this hashtag reference here. So that's because I have a couple blank cells down here. So I'm just going to pull those, these numbers lower. Okay. So the top, so this is now 2018. Few macros. I'm going to run this macro. Okay, and this one worked. And I'm going to go to 2019, cell A1, view macro, run. Okay, so that also worked. Okay, so now it did all that work for me. And everything has been formatted based on that one macro I originally created. Okay, so let's go back to create macro buttons to jump from the dashboard to the, these, these following worksheets. It's a new case, so I gotta just update it sometimes. Okay, so on the dashboard, I have these buttons already created. So let me show you how to create a button. And the idea is to uh, create a mac insert a macro in the button to quickly launch to go to these different pages. So let me show you how if you go to insert shapes, you can do a rectangle, you can create a rectangle, and then we 
can also modify the rectangle. So bevel equal to a button like that. And now we have a button. And I'm going to take this and I can copy it. And I can put a few buttons out there. Line them up, make it a little bit neater. So printing a button is very simple. You know, just going to insert shapes and then shake the rectangle or anything else, any other shape you can create. Um, so we can actually do these arrows too. And I can put in, put a beveled arrow in. And if I click it, I can hit copy. I can make different arrows. I can even change the color of some of these arrows. I'll leave this one blue. So actually, these buttons I can just delete. I don't need them anymore. They're just a demonstration. Delete those. So I'll put these buttons here. And then you can also insert text in these buttons. So you can right click and edit text. I can put in year 2019, edit text 2018, edit text 2017, edit text 2016. Okay, so now we have our buttons. So first let me create some simple macros. So let me go to view, record macro, I'll call this 2019, okay. Okay, okay, so there's a conflict here. So I'm gonna say, it's a conflict because it's the name of a worksheet. So I can't, macro can't be the same name as a worksheet. So we'll just go, Go to 2019. Okay, so then 2019, put in the cell here, stop recording. Back to dashboard, record macro, go to 2018. Okay, 2018, boom, stop recording. Dashboard, record macro, go to 17 okay 2017 stop recording back to the dashboard record macro go to 2016 and then just go to 2016 and then stop recording Okay, so back to the dashboard. Okay, so now I can go and I can right click and I can click on assign macro. So I'm gonna put it, go to 2019 here, click here, assign macro, go to 2018, okay, click here, assign macro, 2017, click here, assign macro, 2016, okay. So now that they're assigned, I can just click on it and it bounces right to click on 2018 and it will appear in 2018 spreadsheet. So it just goes right to the, um, the spreadsheet I click on. Okay. And now what I can also do is why not color code the tabs to be close to what the buttons are. It should be a dark blue. Dark blue, light blue, purple, red. Okay. So red. Okay. So that's cool because now the um, the buttons kind of match match the color coded. So that's pretty pretty cool. Cool. 
um, over here. Um, this I can delete these buttons. So I'm just going to right click and delete. These are just examples, so I don't need them. I'm going to delete them. Okay. These, oops. Okay, so now I have my quick buttons here. Now I have to fill out the this dashboard here. So it says, the buttons now complete the analysis dashboard, complete the table, complete the table, Table and dashboard worksheets and go to dashboard. So here, 2016 invoice sales. Let's say we don't have any of that, so we have like discount sales. So this column we should actually go and delete since we deleted those columns before. We don't need and there's no invoice sales, so we're gonna go right to this discount sales. So we'll plus 2016 discount sales. And since if you look here, discount sales, total cost, gross profit, total cost, gross profit, I can just drag this over and get all those in there. Format this as percent. And I can do the same here. So let me just go 2017, total discount sales, 2018, total discount sales. I can just drag these over. Okay. Now, if your data, if your numbers in here are different than mine, uh, that's because I usually go into these spreadsheets. I change a few numbers around so that way, if anybody tries to copy uh, from a former or a previous semester or uh, uh, someone else, I have these little changes. So if your your number should be different, could be the same or could be different. Uh, that's for me to know, you to find out. So I just this is really just not to show you what the numbers answer should be, uh, but these will be close. This is really just to um, give an example of how to complete the spreadsheet. Okay, so now I've filled in this tab. So create the dashboard and the worksheet and create an executive summary to analyze the sales data. And I'm gonna put a link to the video I'm creating here so you have an idea of how this works. So you're gonna, uh, of course, you're gonna create a new worksheet Put it in the front position. Have this executive summary and insert a text box to create your executive summary. So in here, when you're going to create the executive summary to compare and analyze sales data, you want to go in and um, the dashboard is just the starting position to analyze. You could also go in and do create some pivot tables if you wanted to, to analyze by customer, by product number. Uh, so you can give us the results by product number, by customer. So things like that would be a cool additional a way to do create an executive summary to give you a little bit more background, not just on the dashboard, but to actually go into each year, maybe create a pivot table, um, you might have to create, so say for 2016, I take this worksheet, copy this, make a new tab, paste it in there, delete the subtotal, control A to highlight, insert pivot table. Now that I have a pivot table, I can do it by, it's a little smaller, I can go and say, I might wanna know by product, and then just want the products here. And I can do sales, costs, gross profits. So this way I can actually for the, the, the number of different products here. And you see that some products look doubled up. That must be because if you go here on the product and you stretch out Go on the 
product here. So I'll take the column here. You'll see that there's some numbers in here. So it's more than just not everything is in, some of them are rounded up or rounded down. So that's why we have a difference there. Something you discover when you create that pivot table. So now you have, can make an analysis um, by product number if you want to, or customer number. So if I take away uh, product customer over here, now I could do the analysis by customer. So there's a couple different ways that you can uh, do a little additional slicing dicing of the data to uh, help your executive sales analysis. But you want to make sure that you put these columns to the back. You don't want to disturb the original formatted data you have here. You can make a copy of that data like I did and then make a pivot table to get a little bit of additional uh, details, make some even charts perhaps, perhaps if you wanted to make um, a pivot chart or two on you know sales. So help me to analyze sales by customer, sales by product, sales by year. This should all be placed into the executive summary. Okay, so that's the video on how to create macros and macro buttons to quickly bounce around the spreadsheet. Uh, to help you in the work world, in the real world, these skills will come in very handy to help you speed up and quickly incorporate um, repetitive tasks in one click of a macro. Get that macro in shape. Okay. All right. Thank you for your time. I hope you found this useful.